Good afternoon folks, welcome back to uh, Advanced Hour Chemistry on the 10th of May when it's snowing, blowing a gale and it's freezing in Inverness. Um, we're going to cover two things this afternoon. Um, we are going to cover how to write electrons, electronic configuration, more accurately than we ever did before. And the second thing which will integrate into that idea are you required to know three different principles, three rules that go with uh, quantum mechanics and electrons and how they're structured around the atom's nucleus. So I think I'll start with, excuse me, I think I'll start with the, um, how we write electronic configurations. So let's start with that. Back in the bad old days of S3, um, we told you that electrons more or less go in circles around the nucleus and um, you could fit two electrons in the first circle and then eight in all the rest was what we said. Um, that was a mistruth. However, if you see what I've done here, that's two and it's ten, eight, uh, 18, 20. So this is potassium. No, it's not. It's calcium. Sorry. Have I done much chemistry? This is um, calcium. Element 20, and we told you not to go beyond element 20 when we're doing this sort of configurations. There's a very good reason for that. Um, we're going to have a look today at a more accurate version than this. Uh, I think the easiest way to do this uh, might be to start with orbital box notation, as it's called. There are two types of notation you have to be familiar with, spectroscopic notation an orbital box notation. I think we'll start with the little boxes first. Um, let's pick a hydrogen, for example. It's, start, it's a good one to start with, of course. Nice and simple. Um, one electron. Can't go far wrong with that. Um, now, last time we looked at our four quantum numbers, they were the address of this electron. Now, when we're dealing with... One of the rules still holds, by the way. Do you remember we always filled from the centre out? Well, the same applies... Uh, with the quantum numbers, we start with the lowest energy level, which I'm hoping by now you'll be okay with realising that n is equal to 1. Um, if you cast your minds back or go back to the last video, this means L has got to be 0. So this tells us the energy level, this tells us which type of orbital we're dealing with. Um, M, which has got to be 0, so that's a 1 value, means you can fit one pair of electrons into this type of orbital. Uh, ML, sorry, my apologies, and MS um, can either be plus a half or minus a half. The reason for this will hopefully become uh, clear today. It's one of our three rules that you're required to know. So if we have a hydrogen, we've only got one electron, that's it, game over. Um, if we skip across to element two, which is helium, uh, we now have two electrons. Uh, they are still in the first energy level, and they're in an S orbital. That's what that value there tells you. Um, remember, we had different values of L and different types of orbital. We had 0, 1, 2, and we had S. These were called P orbitals. These will be called D orbitals. There are F as well, but we hardly ever talk about them. They are there. Um, helium, of course, two electrons now. Now, I did say this was called orbital box notation and have neglected completely to draw any boxes. So, tell you what, let's draw a box for hydrogen. There's hydrogen's box. How are we going to represent the electron? Let's give it a little arrow, shall we? There we go. So, there's the electron in hydrogen. Helium, still the same box. When I say the same box, I mean, of course, this box is an orbital. This is the one s orbital. So now we have an electron here, but we have a second electron. It will have to have an ms, a spin number of negative a half. How are we going to show this? Take a wild guess. Well, the arrow is going to go that way. So this is the orbital box notation for the two electrons in helium. Um, I'm genuinely divided now whether I should stick with orbital box notation and go up to more complex atoms. Yes, I think we'll go that way. Next atom. One, two, element three, lithium. Um, lithium has got three electrons, obviously. Duh, that's why it's the third element. Um, and if we were doing this in old-fashioned terms, we would say 
one here, one here. That, by the way, corresponds to that. And then one in the next level. And it's completely true. We have got this box here with its two electrons in it. This is the one, the one S orbital we can only fit two electrons in. Now we skip up to the next level. So for the next level, energy level that is, N will now be two. L can be zero and L can be one. If L is zero, M has got to be zero. If L is one, ML, sorry, my apologies, ML can be negative one, zero, plus one. So three pairs of electrons in this type of orbital, one pair of electrons in this type of orbital. Can I cast your minds back again and see that this is an S orbital? And when L is one, we are dealing with P orbitals. You notice I've stuck an S on the end of that orbitals because there are three separate P orbitals. Um, we'll have a look at the, what they look like uh, in the very near future. They're shapes of these, and you're required to recognise the shapes. Interesting shapes. I'll maybe even explain why they are that shape. It's a maths thing. D don't tell the maths department. Honestly, don't tell them, but it's so irritating how useful their subject is. Um, now, if there is a value of zero, that means there's one pair. So this can fit, you can fit two electrons in here, just like we did before. Um, and because there are three values, you can fit one pair of electron in each of these three p orbitals. So two, four, six, eight electrons in the second layer. Um, it's just that some of them are now in an s orbital, and some of them can be in these three p orbitals. So, going back to our electrons here, we've got these two, or these two, then we've got this one here, this will go in the next level up, and it will pop into the s orbital first, because the, this is the 2s orbital, which is a slightly lower energy than 2p. Um, I'm talking about energies now because I'm sneaking in another of our three rules. The first rule I sneaked in was to do with how you can distinguish between these two electrons. The second rule I'm sneaking in is that you fill, we already knew this actually, we just didn't realise it was a rule, you fill from the lowest energy orbital up into the higher energy orbitals, there's a name for that. Anyway, let's have a look at lithium. We're, we're finished with the lithium. Um, three electrons, one, two, three. Um, can I pause you just for two seconds there, please? Grant, let's move on to beryllium. Four electrons in beryllium. These are, we're going to pack two of these electrons into the first layer, which we now know is the 1s orbital. Then we skip up to the second layer. And we're going to put one in here. And because we're supposed to fill lowest energy first, these are slightly higher energy, so let's fill up this orbital here. Um, so that's beryllium done. Let's move on to boron. Five electrons. So I'm going to run out of space very soon, as you can see. One, two, three, four. Now, fifth one. Now we need to start filling electrons into these orbitals here, which are the second energy level. And the, this orbital here has a value of L being zero. That's why it's an S orbital. These guys here are P orbitals because L can now be one. And L can be one because we're dealing with N being two. Because L is zero up to N minus one. Anybody got a headache yet? Um, so let's fire our electron into here. They, these are two P orbitals. They're actually given slightly different subscripts, P, X, Y, and Z, because they lie on the X, Y, and Z axis, as you will see in the very near future. I'm going to move on to uh, carbon now, but I'm going to keep this on the screen, hopefully. I'm using an incredibly high-tech method of folding the paper to keep it on the screen. In fact, do you know what we'll do? We'll just do it that way. Let's move on to carbon. Carbon has six electrons. Now in old money, we used to do one, two, 
one, two, three, four. Only these four electrons we now know are not comparable to each other. Um, so we are going to put two electrons into the 1s orbital. Then we can put another two electrons into the 2s orbital. And now we have the 2p orbitals. Please remember, an orbital is an area of space that can take up to one pair of electrons. So that's p, p that's a p, and that's a p orbital on the three different axes, x, y, and z. And these are shapes of space that you find the electrons in, by the way. Now, one, two, three, four, we've got two more electrons. Let's put one into here, and now we have a little dilemma. What to do with the next electron? Should we squeeze it into this box, or should we separate them out? <laughs> Separation. <laughs> That's a topical subject for 2020, isn't it? Um, this is the third rule, and I call it the seats on the bus rule. Um, I don't know if anybody else is as antisocial as I am, but if you come onto a bus and there's one person sitting in a seat, you're highly unlikely to go and join, unless you know them, of course, um, you had to go, go and join them. You're going to go to the next row of seats. So let's fire our electron in. It, it does exactly the same thing. The electrons don't like to team up, pair up rather, until they're absolutely forced to. Um, so let's do nitrogen. Seven electrons. There we go. Um, and the last one I'm going to tackle is oxygen. Eight electrons. Five, six, seven. Now we have no choice. We're going to have to go back to here and put the eighth electron in there. Is this looking good? So what we've got here, folks, is what's called the orbital box notation. Very quick spin over this. If we take just one of these as an example, and um, let's highlight oxygen here. Just a very quick resume of where these come, these, these come from. These are the electrons, of course. This box here is an orbital, which is an area volume of space which can take up to two electrons, and then it's full. Uh, the quantum numbers mean that this is our first energy level. So this is the inner circle that we used to draw of electrons. And we just told you before it can only hold two electrons. Now you sort of know why. Because when n is 1, l can only be 0. So therefore, you only have one value of m, and therefore one pair of electrons. These two electrons are separated by the m S number, which is either positive a half or negative a half, just so you can differentiate between the two electrons. Because I did say in one of the last videos that you can never have the same address, same set of address numbers for any two electrons in the universe. Um, you must always be able to distinguish them. Well, certainly, until you get down to the fifth state of matter, but we're not going to go there. Bose-Einstein condensates are not within the scope of this course. Um, so that is our 1s orbital, s because that's the value of L. Then we skip up to the second energy level. Now when n is 2, L can be 0, but L can also be 1. So this is our 2s orbital, and these are our 2p orbitals. Why are there three of them? Because when L is 1, which these are p orbitals, then m can now be negative 1, 0, or plus 1. So there are three values, three types of orbital. Each one can hold uh, a pair of electrons if you need it to. And I'm going to stop there. For, I'm going to pause there, sorry. I did say I was going to cover two types of representation. I said I was going to cover orbital box notation, which is what this is. And I also said I was going to cover spectroscopic notation. So let's do spectroscopic now. And I'll break up my incredibly high-tech uh, visual learning aids, i.e. coloured pens. Okay. Um, let's pick one of these elements that we just did. Uh, let's pick somewhere in the middle of the pack. Nitrogen, for example. 
So we said nitrogen, seven electrons, whoops, seven electrons, not Z electrons, um, and we fitted them into the 1S orbital. And then we skipped up to the second energy level, which is the 2S orbital. This is when L0. And of course, we also have our new types of orbital now. We have P orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. How can we show this? What is spectroscopic notation? Spectroscopic notation is a faster version, far faster than this. Um, and it looks a bit like this. Uh, you have a number. What's the best way of showing this? Hold on two seconds. Like orbital box notation, we start spectroscopic notation, my apologies, at the lowest energy level. Now, we call these. These are n equal 1, so it's 1. L has to be 0, so this is an s orbital. So we say 1s, and then we count how many electrons are in that particular orbital, and we put it up here as a little superscript. So 1s2, that's these guys. Then we move on to the next box and we're going to convert that into spectroscopic notation. So this is now n being 2. This is L0, these are L is 1. So let's do these first because these are lower energy, 2s, and again, two electrons in it. And then let's do these guys. We're still n equals 2, we're still on this level, so it's still 2. But these are no longer s orbitals, these are p orbitals. Why are these p orbitals? Because this is a value of l being uh, 1, and this was for the value of l being 0. Why can you not get an l being 1 here? Because this was the first energy level where n was 1. And you can't get l being 1, you can only get l being 0 up to n minus 1. So these are two, but these are not s orbitals now, these are p orbitals, and one, two, three, three electrons. So this is the orbital box, so I do apologize, this is the orbital box notation from nitrogen, and this is what's called the spectroscopic notation. So two different ways of showing you the, the way that electrons are arranged in a given atom. Um, I said that I was going to sneak the three rules in today, I'll be honest with you. I don't want to stuff that all into one video. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to ask you to go away and pick a few elements, you know, anywhere from 1 to 20. Again, don't go past 20, please. You'll find out. In fact, don't go past... Oh dear, just right the place, sorry. Don't go past 18, okay? Don't uh, go past Argon. Argon's the end of the game, um, and I'll tell you why I don't want you to do that in the next video. So I might even turn this into, into an assignment, actually, folks. I might pause there and go and ask you to go and draw some electronic configurations in both notations for three or four elements your pick, somewhere between one, not very much of a challenge, and 18. Okay, thanks for listening.